Lamin Yamal has been amazing for for Spain. I'm talking. I'm talking about his performance in Spain right now. He also has been very good with Barcelona. But you know what's the wonderful thing about youngsters, about young players? You tell them exactly what you expect of them. You tell them exactly where they need to be, how they need to be, what they need to do. And they're capable of understanding their position, their role. Now, it has to be, of course, with, within reason. Lamin Yamal has been amazing. You do you. You do what you need to do. And Luis de la Fuente has been very intelligent with that. He wasn't restraining. He wasn't, oh, let's wait. The time was right, and things developed, and everything flourished. That's Again, that's the beautiful thing about having youngsters. Because within their insolence, within their confidence, and within the establishment of what you have within a program, young players can flourish. And Spain has shown that time and time again. But it's not only that. People aren't going to mention one thing. It's that... And, and again, I have to go into, into a hypothetical in order to ha let people understand this. If Spain would have been eliminated by France, if Spain would have been eliminated by, uh, you know, if Spain would have been eliminated in semis by, Fran by France or by Germany, I don't know of anyone, maybe there will be people, but a very small minority, a very insignificant minority, and a very irrelevant group of people, would be blaming Lamine Yamal for that elimination. I don't think anyone would, within reason. No one would be putting the blame squarely on a 16, 17-year-old kid. It would be ridiculous to do so. So everything that surrounds Lamin Yamal is perfect for him to grow and grow properly and grow in the right manner. And what does that give you? Well, we've seen what it's given you. Now, let's contrast that a little bit and start talking about Endrick. Of course, he'll be playing with Real Madrid in just a couple of weeks' time. What ends up happening with him? Well, Endrick doesn't have that situation in Brazil. He has it at Palmeiras, but he didn't have it at the Brazilian national team level. At Palmeiras, let's wait. Okay, give him a bit. Give him some time. Here, try here. Do this. And as the confidence grew and the ability be became quite evident and his leadership and his confidence and everything... You saw Endrick towards the tail end of last year and part, and part of last year become a very influent part, a very influential part of, of Palmeiras winning the league title. And then he comes into Brazil and, and yeah, he come off the bench, but then Dorival Jr. is like, well, no, we can't, uh, you know, we have to hold on, we have to wait. Oh, no, mate, no, no, he's still too young. No, we, we can't, we ruin his confidence. We can't do this, we can't do that. He never really established something for Endrick to aim towards. And it's part of the self-destructive nature of Brazilian football at times that I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here, but I'm supposed to be doing something, and oh shit, I have to go do it now. Now, if there was one thing that Endrick was being told that he needed to be was the savior of Brazil. Damn. That's not what people are looking <laughs> at, at La Minha Mal to be at the end of the day. Can he bail them out of certain situations? Yes, he can. But no one in Spain is looking at him as the savior of the country, savior of the nation, savior of our football. No, 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 no. Nobody's looking at him like that. Mind you, he's in a team with, for all intents and purposes, and it's not a knock. You don't have any superstars on Spain's national team. You really don't. Maybe Rodri ends up getting close to that, but you don't have absolute superstars that Lamin Yamal has to come in and he's taking the baton over for. No, he's not. He ends up being another piece in a cog of machine in a machine that is working maybe not to perfection, but very damn close to it. Meanwhile, Endrick, well, he's the be all and end all. He's the save all. He's that what ends up bailing us out. At 17, when you're put in a situation like that, dude, if it's not for you, we're done. If it's not for you, I'm done. Speaking from a coaching perspective. The kid's in trouble. Thank goodness he's going to Real Madrid and he has a process and he's going to have to wait and he's going to have to sit back and, and, and observe 
and adapt and that process. Kind of the same thing that Vinicius went to went through and Federico Valverde went through and Rodrigo went through and many others, with the exception of course of Jude Bellingham, who immediately just kind of jumped in at 20, almost a little less than a little over 20, or a little over 19, I should say, when he was already just 20, he ends up being that part. This is what the structure of Brazilian football, it's almost self-destructive, where you end up being dropped in the middle of the ocean. You end up having to learn how to lift weights, lifting the heaviest weight possible, not learning the technique or not learning the structure or not learning the, the physics behind it. You could end up getting hurt. Now, am I saying that Endrick is going to end up getting hurt? Probably not. He could and should flourish. Now, how far is he going to go? I don't know yet. But he has potential to go very far. The problem is not him. I mean, if you're thinking that I'm, I'm blaming him, no. The problem is I'm blaming the structure around him that is hindering his, his progress. Again... Endrick, I'm talking about within the Brazilian national team, went from, let's keep, let's take it slow with him. Let's wait him for a few minutes. He'll come off the bench. He'll play a few minutes towards the end. He'll, and all of a sudden, he's not there. Please save me. Bail me out. I don't know what I'm going to do. If it's not for you, I don't know what I can do. He doesn't know exactly where he's at. But he knows what people expect of him, which is something unrealistic because Brazil find themselves in the middle of a situation and it's not his fault. Brazil find themselves Pele, Garrincha, Zico, Rivelino, Socrates, Romário, Bebeto, Ronaldinho, um, Neymar, have to add Neymar. Who's next? Brazil find themselves in a position where, for the first time in nearly 60 years, they don't have a superstar. They don't have that earth-shattering, world, you know, revolving type of player that ends up capturing the imagination of the world. They don't. They flat out don't. And they're damn scared of it. Not only that, they find themselves in sixth place in World Cup qualifying with the possibility, ironically, with a possibility of not making the World Cup in a World Cup where it's been expanded to 48 teams. Which sounds absolutely ridiculously crazy, and I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but it's a good possibility the way that they're playing. Or Brazil playing to... to play themselves into a World Cup in a World Cup playoff. That's the problem. And who's the solution? 17-year-old Hendrik. He's the one that's supposed to lift the team up full of veterans that play in the Premier League in Serie A, in the Bundesliga, in La Liga, and of course in the Brasileirão. He's, he's the one that's supposed to lift those guys up. Now tell me if there is a huge contrast between one and the other. Because to me, there is.